Okay, first stop on this brewery uh, pub crawl is uh, Indecente Brewing, or Indecente, Indecente. and uh, we thought it was uh, like a micro brew, and it actually is, but this is their, their store location, their actual brewery is not open to the public. So here we are, we came to the store, we ordered, I got one of each. And uh, I'm gonna go try one. So I'm uh, starting this brewery tour today, this brew pub tour. And we've got five on the list. We just hit the first one. Uh, they close pretty soon. So we went there first and we found out that it's the store uh, for the brewery, not the place they brew. So next stop is in another town, Pusidias, which is in, actually in another state, the state of Darien. So that's where we're heading. I think it's about a half hour. All right, so this uh, dr Drunk Norris is the name of this beer. It's an American Pale Ale. Okay, so this this beer's got a, a great aroma. It's a very fruity, uh, fruity hop aroma. I'm not sure what hops they are, but man, the aroma's really thick. It's dank. Give it a try. I'm gonna say that's probably about a 60 IBU. Just in the right, perfect range for a pale, in my opinion. Very well made beer, very well attenuated, and I'm gonna enjoy it. Trunk Norris. Okay, so here we are at the uh, Cerviceria Bahia de Banderas Brewery, and uh, just before Busadias, I'm gonna go in and check this place out. How's it going? You sit right here. Welcome. Right. Thank you. Uh, looks like they've got a, a stout, an IPA, a pale ale, a blonde, and a golden. All right, we'll give these a shot. So this is the bar top. What a beautiful bar top. So this is the system. Looks like every homebrew system that I've uh, that I've seen almost. I have Sankey kegs for for kettles, and uh, I love these little 10-gallon systems. They they work out perfect, and uh, this reminds me so much of home brewing. Beautiful. There you go. Okay, and. Uh, I believe it goes this way with the stout, the IPA, the uh, pale ale, blonde ale, and golden ale. All right, perfect. Thank you so much for organizing this. Cheers. Okay, so this golden ale, I'm gonna taste it. It's very light. Um, definitely a, a Kolsch style yeast, I think. Actually, it's what it says, and I, I taste very much like a Kolsch style yeast. Uh, no, almost no uh, hops at all. And uh, easy drinking, crisp, low alcohol. Probably get through about 10 pints of these in a day if I wanted to. This next beer has Cascade hops, which come from Washington, <clears throat> and uh, Centennial hops, which also probably came from Washington. And so I know what I'm expecting from this beer, and we'll see if it's there. Okay, it does have a, it does have the hop presence of uh, the bitterness of a low bitterness of a cascade and uh, Centennial does blend well with the uh, cascade 
and uh, it's got a kind of a graininess to the to the malt bill. But yeah, enjoying it. Another low alcohol. Probably drink about 20 of these in a day. <laughs> All right. So next is the uh, pale ale, Las Veneros Pale Ale, and uh, it's. I taste it already. I'll taste it again. It's a very well balanced uh, beer. The grain and the hops complement each other perfectly. Um, it's exactly what you would want out of a pale ale. A little bit of a fruity note, but not not harsh bitterness in the in the aroma and not harsh bitterness in the flavor. Definitely a good beer so far. Three out of three. Uh, Bay of Benderas Brewing is a win. Okay, for the IPA, Pariso IPA. Basically, it's the Paradise IPA. So I'm expecting a strong hop character. Um, Amarillo Simcoe hops. Those are great for IPA. Should be real citrusy. And uh, let's see where it's at. Okay, it's starting to warm up a little, and uh, I'm not sure if I just can't smell or if I'm getting saturated already from the others. But I don't know. There it is. Yeah, it's it's a little bit fruity, but not not super fruity. Um, getting real mild malt maltiness from it. So let's see. Okay, I think the bitterness is there. It's a low bitterness right for a IPA. It says it's a 45, and that's probably about right. I expect an IPA to be around a 65 or better. But um, the bitterness is there, so and it, it finishes clean, so I like it. Okay, I just tasted the stout. El Tizate Tizate stout. I think it's pronounced. I'm not sure. Um, definitely chocolate. Definitely chocolate was the first note I got in the smell and in the in the flavor. In the aroma is sure chocolate. There's a just chocolate. Oh, and, and there's coffee there. And as it warms, I'm, I'm almost getting a chocolate coffee from it, which is pretty good. So um, yeah, it's it's not refreshing, but it's it's definitely um, it's definitely well balanced, and uh, it's a great stout. Um, I think I would like to drink this on a much cooler day. Okay, stop number three. We're at L3 Blade Brewing. We're gonna go in here and have a, a couple of beers. I might just get a flight. I've been here once before, but I know, remember this place being pretty good. So let's go check it out. All right, here we go, L3 Blade. Here we are. Can't wait to get a couple of beers. I'm excited. All right, I think I'm gonna go with a, probably a flight if they got them. And if no, they do, I'll get tasters. All right, cool, here we go. When was the last time y'all seen a payphone, huh? Nice. Yeah, this is just outside the bathroom, decorated with beer caps, it's pretty cool. We're heading back here to check out this brew system. And uh, very nice. It's a, uh, looks like it's about a one, one or two barrel. 55 gallons. 55 gallons. Okay. This might be around 50, uh, 60, 70. Sure. It's the boil for boil the kettle. That's the hot liquor. Yep, hot liquor tank. You need the brewer? Yeah. Oh, nice. All right, very cool. So, yeah, it's a nice system. It's a. Uh, Obviously, gravity from there, probably, and a pump, and a pump across. All right, cool. And then for chilling, what do you do for chilling? For chill, you have a oh, okay, a nice, nice decent sized chiller. Yeah, very cool. Bottling line. Yeah, a nice small little spot. Works perfect. All right, I like it. Okay, Holly's having a hard cider, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and taste it. Okay, it's got a really strong apple flavor. It's well fermented. I don't see any off flavors. Maybe a little cinnamon, a little cinnamon to it. It's pretty good. And I ended up getting uh, the Pilsner to start, and I'm gonna get one of each of the tasters. But uh, this Pilsner looks really light, pale, see-through, just about see-through. Uh, let's check it out. We'll see.
super crisp, super low hops. Um, there's a little something with the water. I'm not sure what it is. Kind of a, almost a hose water thing, but not real prominent. It's not super, super strong. But uh, yeah, it's, it's all right. It's decent pills. I'm not a big fan of pills to start with, but this is an okay pills. Okay, so we got the Vienna Lager, and it's a very amber color. Uh, low head. I'd say it has, I'd say it has little to no uh, aroma. And uh, give the uh, lager, the Vienna Lager, a try first. That's clean fermented beer. That's <laughs> excuse me. That beer's uh very well made and uh, fermented nicely. I don't know what else to say about it. It's not very hoppy, uh, not super grainy. It's well balanced. It's very much what I would expect to be in a lager to be. Not real sweet, but uh, definitely good. Let's bring in the stout. Got the uh, stout, it's a chocolate stout. It's a uh, Selva Negra. I'm gonna give it a shot, and it's uh, it looks really dark. It's been sitting a minute. It did have a nice thick head on it. It looks like the head is still sticking to the side, which is not, you know, which is a good thing. So I'm imagining it might be a little creamy. We're about to find. Nice. It's got great chocolate and coffee notes, and it's very smooth, it's not cloying, uh, it's dry, so uh, man, it's everything you'd hope in a, in a stout, I, I think. I like it, it's, it's well fermented, There's, it doesn't seem like they're trying to hide off flavors with it or anything, so yeah, great stout, boy, I'm happy with that. Now, something else just happened, the brewer, he brought me out uh, a Belgian triple that's not on the tap list yet. He said it doesn't actually come out until next month. So I'm pretty excited about that. Okay, Belgian triple time here. This is uh, a high alcohol Belgian. Um, should be pretty dry. We're about to find out again. Wow. Yeah, there's actually, it's a little sweeter than I thought. Super crisp. And uh, so crisp and sweet at the same time. I wanna say it's a little bit hot with the alcohol, but because it doesn't come out for another month, I believe he's aging it, probably trying to age some of the hotness out. It's not fusel, so there's no problems with that. I think it's a well-made beer. And I think this is a beer that I would like to get a can of or a couple bottles of to take with me. Okay, I'm here at Los Muertos Brewing, and I ordered a taster flight, and these are some pretty good sized taster drinks. Uh, I'm gonna suck them all down and let you know how they are, and then uh, off to the next brewery after we drink some beers, and I think we're gonna eat some pizza. All right, so we got the uh, lager, Mexican lager. Uh, Mexicana Rubia. It's right here. We'll uh, give this a shot. Yeah, it's a little hoppy for a lager. It's uh, a little quite bitter for, for a lager. It says IBUs are 15, but I'm, I'm going to say those IBUs are up in the 40s. So either they gave me the wrong beer or that is not a cream list crisp, clean, easy drinking lager like it says on the menu. It's not a bad beer, but it's not what I would call a, a, a lager. Pepperoni and sausage. It's a big pizza. Like I always say, uh, Los Muertos has great, Los Muertos Brewing has great pizza. Alright, the next beer is the Anilla de Fuego, it's brewed with roasted serrano peppers. So it's a, I'm expecting it to be a little bit spicy. We'll see how it is.
Okay, definitely can taste the Serranos. It's a tiny bit spicy. You can see it's super clear. You could read a newspaper through that if you wanted to. And uh, yeah, it's got crisp lager type features and it's very sparkly. It is spicy. It's, it's uh, kind of sneaks up on you too. So I think it'd be great with some tacos. Next up, Revenge IPA. <laughs> so I believe that this IPA is, uh, it says classic West, West Coast style. And it's got, it says bitter with an exclamation point. So I'm hoping that's true. It's 7.6%. Uh, says 65 IBUs, which to me, I don't think that's a really high IBU for IPAs, but let's see how it goes. Yeah, that's mildly hoppy. Um, pretty grainy. Um, I would say it's more of a balanced pale ale, like a, like a, maybe a, a strong pale ale, but it's, I wouldn't call that an IPA. I'm walking on my uh, way to the last brewery of the uh, pub crawl. I'll be quite honest with you, I had to uh, not finish that night because I had had too many beers to keep filming, and we forgot, I forgot to keep filming. But, uh, so I'm going, going there now, and we'll take care of Monzon and we'll knock it out of the way. And I, uh, telling you I like Monzon Brewing, so here we are. Monzon. Now before I go in there real quick, I'm gonna just let you know a little bit about it. The uh, brewer from Monzon, he's from, uh, or the owner, he's from uh, Seattle. I think the other owner, or part owner, I don't know all the details, is from San Diego area, I believe. And uh, yeah, they make really good beers, uh, pretty much US style craft beers. And uh, let's go in and try it. All right, so there's the, uh, the menu list. I'm gonna come back and get a flight. But let's go around and look at the brewery real quick. I got this really sick barrel. So, I got permission from the manager to go back here to take some quick pictures. You get the, uh, the octopus mural. And then off, they have a pretty, pretty nice system here. Um, a couple of fermenters over here. And there's a water tank, mash hood, mash hood, I believe, oil kettle. Yeah, pretty good system. Nice big chiller. And uh, so cool. I'm gonna take you upstairs real quick. There's another level to this place. Here we are in the upstairs. The upstairs and they've got this uh, Really cool mural. The whole wall is a mosaic mural. The restrooms are up here. The baños. That's cool. I like these uh, cart chairs. They're pretty cool. They're simple to move and big, comfortable cushions sitting on them. And you've got the barrels for the tables. You go outside, you got a uh, nice outdoor seating. And if you look down uh, down here, there's a little market going on, and that's there every single day. And if you go back this way, you have uh, you have the address of Bayarda and Carranza here in the Romantic Zone. All right, my taste and flight should be up here pretty soon, and then we'll get to it. So we have Wish You Were Here, which is a Hefeweizen. We have the Boca Hershata Ale, which I'm not quite sure of. This is Lupita, which is an IPA. 
This is Verano, which is a Saison. And this one here is Two Stars, which is a double IPA. So let's uh, get after it. I'm gonna start here with the uh, appetizer. You can see it's really clear. It's uh, just gonna walk up there. Really clear. You can see it right through it. Smells of a little bit of clove. A little bit of banana. Tiny bit of clove, maybe. I'm not sure. It's real cool, it's real crisp. Perfect to drink on a hot day. Today is uh yeah, today is not really super hot, but it is really, really humid today. Okay, so I was wrong about the wish you were here. The wish you were here is not the uh, Hefeweizen, which, okay, kind of makes sense, but it is a wheat. It's a tiki wheat with orange, pineapple, vanilla, and coconut. Okay, so this was probably about 45 minutes ago when I tasted it, so it's hard to go back and reiterate, but yeah, I thought there was something weird about a Hef. It was a good beer anyway. So next up we got, we got a uh, boca horchata ale. Okay, so for those that don't know, horchata is a rice and almond drink. It's made with, uh, I believe, uh, condensed milk and, and rice, and, uh, soaked rice and almonds and uh, in, the, in the milk and then it's sugar added. And so it's kind of a sweet drink and there's some cinnamon in it. So I'm expecting this to be a tiny bit creamy with some cinnamon. And uh, let's see. Yeah, it's, it's creamy. I don't know if there's a lot of cinnamon, but it does give off like a milky kind of flavor. I'm not quite sure how it's made or what's in it. But we have kind of a little nuttiness. Good. So now I have to skip that one and go with the I'm gonna go with the Verano. Verano is the Saison. And uh, Saison and farmhouse ales are Similar, you see that little tiny bit of a color to the one. Let's give it a shot. Okay, so it's warming up a little, and I'd like to have that super cold. This one here. This is uh, a <laughs> American style. Um, IPA. I think it's supposed to have 61 or 63 bit IBUs. I'm not exactly sure. I'm not looking at the menu right now. But it's in the low 60s for what, I, for what it says. Um, I'm going to go ahead and taste it and tell you what I think of it. Again, it's clear, not hazy, well connected. Okay. This is hot. I think it's above 65, probably close to 72 IBs. I'm not sure what the numbers are in there. But it's hot. And I like it. And it's everything I would hope in the American IPA. The grain is not overwhelming at all. It's sweet. It's actually a drier, uh, drier beer. The bitterness levels are right where you hope a good IPA would be. One thing I'm surprised of, and I was surprised because um, one of their other beers that I had was for between the minute. It doesn't do this. Right put my nose in that glass, I smell hot. I smell hot. And you know what? When I go out to my kid, I want hot. So, big deal. Okay. Okay, the last one, I'm not going to say it's the least one, is uh, very high in alcohol. I don't know the Double IPA. Um, I think it's around. I think it's around eight percent or something like that. I have to. I'll come back to that. I'll go back to the uh, board and see. But, uh, 
Yeah, this is the two stars, the double IPA. Hey, okay, that's got Again, like I was talking about, this one doesn't even have the nose. It doesn't have the aroma that the IPA has. Um, but this is sweeter. I would call this more of almost like an English IPA. Again, it's warm right now. The beers are getting warmer as I'm sitting here, so it's, they're changing. But uh, definitely more grain uh, profile in this one. And uh, the bitterness is there to call it an IPA for sure. It's, it's fully bitter. Um, I'm not sure what kind of hot. I want to guess. Centennial, maybe, in this one, but I, I really don't know. But, um, yeah, great double IPA if you want to sit back and drink one of these. Um, you'll feel it. And uh, I think it's a great beer, especially on a day where I like today where it's a little bit cooler. So it's just a little bumpy. Okay, as you can see, I did not chug all those beers. I tasted them all individually, cleared my palate in between them. But uh, just to reiterate, in my opinion, from best to from my favorite to my least favorite, we'll start with Lupita. The American IPA, which is really good, my favorite. We got a double IPA, the two stars, which a little sweeter, love it. Verano, that's the Saison. It's got just that tiny, tiny bit of funk, which is good, just in the right way. Got the bo bo Boca Horchata, which I'm not quite sure what to make of that. It's really, um, it's different than any kind of beer I've ever had. It reminds me of some beers that I've had in Everett at a, at a brewery where the guy likes to put stuff in every beer, some some sort of adjunct into each beer. Um, it's good. I think you'd love this. This one here is uh, the Hefeweizen, and the Hefeweizen is good. It just it's really light on my for my palate. It doesn't have enough hops. I'm a hop lover, and uh, so there we go. Monton Brewing. Okay, so. Just a quick recap, for all the breweries I went to um, the day before and then today, uh, I want to say Monzon Brewing is my favorite one that I've been to in the Puerto Vallarta area. Uh, it, you know, the other one is Busadillas, but it's, they, they, it's called the Puerto Vallarta area, it's really Bay of Banderas. And uh, yeah, those are, I want to say this is my favorite for two reasons. One, the beers are made um, in the style of beer that I like to drink. So that gives me a bias right off the bat. But also the staff here is amazing. Like from the first day I came here, they were so friendly, they, they got my name, they know me every time I come in. I've only been in this town three weeks. These people know me. Uh, every time I come in, they greet me. Uh, we have conversations. You know, the music that we play when, we, when we're when we sitting here having fun is, is, is uh, awesome. And so yeah, when you come to Puerto Vallarta, Make sure you come to uh, Monzon Brewing. 